good evening everyone uh, so in today's webinar we'll be just discussing about uh, the cooling tower what exactly cooling tower is how we can uh, do the different uh, uh, calculations in cooling tower uh, we will be discussing it with a live uh, live project so let's start the session in order to um, proceed ahead uh, let me just give you a brief introduction of myself myself is the khar ahmed i'd be your instructor in this webinar uh, i had an experience of over 8 uh, years in this hvac industry and uh, in 2018 we have just started this comfort design with the objective to just bridge up the gap between the technical part which is being required at the industrial level and which is being not taught at the college level so we are more focused to um, we are just more focused to impart that that type of training okay and we would be just trying to we would be trying to uh, link uh, the gap between the college and the engineering okay so let's start the session without uh, without any delay so the first thing uh, that is what is a cooling tower so in order to understand that uh, what exactly the cooling tower is basically this cooling tower it will be used in hvac system also and it can be used in other system also such as Uh, such as your power plant refinery steel plant also okay so let's see that uh, this is the image of uh, any cooling tower and i believe that you have just seen this type of images which is being the south side of any huge commercial buildings or residential towers okay now how we can define the cooling tower a uh, cooling tower is, is a heat rejection device basically it, it rejects the heat and that is take the waste heat to the atmosphere by cooling a stream of hot water in the tower there is a hot water which is being um, which is being drizzles from the top and it is being cooled down the water is being cooled down and the heat is being rejected into the atmosphere wo atmosphere mein heat reject ho jata cooling tower makes the use of a evaporation whereby some of the water is evaporated into a moving air stream and subsequently discharged into the atmosphere as a result the remainder of the water is being cooled significantly so the basic purpose of this cooling tower is to either cool any system in case of chill water system what we are doing in case of initial water system we are just cooling the condenser of the chiller in case of any uh, oil and gas industry or any steel plant or any refinery or any power plant there with the help of cooling tower what we are doing we are trying to cool any particular equipment so the main purpose of cooling tower is to cool any system so in case of chill water system or in case of hvac we are using this cooling tower to just cool the condenser of a chiller okay now let's move ahead if we see about cooling tower in a chill water system as as i told you that it, it is being used in a chill water system and it is used when when it is being when it is being when the chiller is water cooled chiller it is being this chiller it is when this is your water cooled chiller then only that uh, cooling tower will be used this equipment it can be your ahu also it can be your fcu also because both the thing air handling units it can be your air handling units it can be your uh, fan coil unit okay so at the evaporator side this is being connected with the ahu and fcu but at the condenser side the heat which is being developed at the condenser it is being cooled by the cooling tower the water which is coming out from the cooling tower as you can see with the help of a condenser pump with the help of the condenser pump it is coming to the condenser it is being cooled uh, the that refrigerant is being cooled the water takes the heat water the hot water it is being, so this is your condenser water inlet temperature this one it is your condenser water condenser water inlet inlet line and its temperature is what is its temperature its temperature is 85 degree fahrenheit and this is your outlet line this one that is your condenser water outlet line condenser water outlet line 
and it is your 94.3 degree fahrenheit so these two temperatures 85 degree fahrenheit and 94 degree fahrenheit this is as per ahri ahri 550 slash 590 standard this condenser water inlet line it is condenser water inlet water inlet this is 85 degree fahrenheit and condenser water outlet it is 94.3 degree fahrenheit this is as per ahri 550 590 standard once we look at this cycle once we look at this cycle what we found we found that this cycle it is a closed system and this this water is circulating so what we can write here this is a circulating system it is circulating water recirculates in that and in that this system it is a closed system this is a closed system and here in this case this is a open system here at this part if you observe this part at this part it is your open type so water comes in contact with the air so this system is treated as your open system this is treated as so we can say this this is a uh, closed system and this one it is your open system this one it is your open system now in close both, both this is also a recirculating system this is this one it is your recirculating this is also because water recirculates in the network, network water from the chiller comes with the help of the chill water line with the chill water pump and again going to the evaporator or a, a evaporator of the h or fu cooling coil of the h or fu and again coming back to the evaporator so the water recirculate here also it's recirculate here also it's recirculate it is your recirculating and in recirculating this is your open system now one more thing i would like to hear uh, i'd like to add here because that thing i'd be using where i'd be using in the um, calculation so that is your enclosed system in closed system of flow rate is flow rate is 1 tr equal to 2.4 us gpm that is the flow rate gallon per minute that is for closed system and for open system flow rate is in 1 tr its value starts from 3.2 to 4 us gpm so basically this is the range it starts from 3.2 so cooling tower and the chiller they are connected in a open system and their flow rate what is their flow rate the flow rate that we can maintain in the open system this is our flow rate that is 3 from 3.2 to 4 us gp okay so in this way the cooling tower it is being used on the evaporator side it can be your hu it can be your fcu so depending upon that hu and fcu it, it will be your all air system or all water system okay now uh, you can you can uh, ask your queries i'd be just trying to revert you you can just go to the chat box and ask your queries i'll be just trying to revert you during the live session also okay there is one query that uh, will that will be in us gpm definitely the flow rate it is being measured in us gpm that is gallon per minute or it can also be measured in what it can also be measured in lps that is your liter per second okay so this is this is all about uh, the use application of your cooling tower in the chill water system now let's move ahead and see
that what are the classification of your cooling tower okay how we can classify the cooling tower so the basic classification of cooling tower is that see here uh, classification based upon the build type so in build type it is a package type of field erected type okay now second classification it is it is based upon uh, classification based upon your classification based upon heat transfer mode so it is either wet cooling tower or dry cooling tower or fluid cooler so these three classification based upon your uh, heat transfer mode third one it is the classification based upon air draft type air draft type ke basis pe we will be just dividing it into atmospheric tower natural draft tower and mechanical draft tower Mecha mechanical draft tower is again divided into two part that is your forced draft tower and induced draft tower okay and last one that is the classification based upon the air flow pattern whether it is cross flow or counter flow so this is basically the basic uh, classification of a cooling tower okay now let's move ahead and see if if we just see that is classification by build so the first one that we have that is a package type so in package type what that basically tower this type of cooling tower it is being pre assembled and it can be simply transported on the trucks and as they can be compact in machine and this is generally used for all the hvc applications smaller applications like hospital hotel malls chemical processing plants automotive factories all these things okay now the second one that is your field erected so as it is being this field erected type uh, uh, cooling tower it will be used in oil and gas industry it will be used that is field erected cooling uh, cooling towers are usually preferred for the power plants steel processing plants petroleum refineries petrochemical so all these things okay they are they are basically larger in size and it will be erected it will be installed at the site moving towards the next thing that is uh, classification based upon the heat transfer method so the first thing that we have that is your wet cooling tower so this type of cooling tower operates based upon the evaporation principle means evaporation of water is it is being done and due to that the heat transfer will be there so working fluid and the evaporated fluid usually water it is being used water is water will be used there now the dry cooling uh, tower so this tower operates by the heat transfer through a surface that separates the working fluid and the ambient air such as in tube and air heat exchangers so basically that is your air to air heat transfer is there okay so air to air heat transfer is there and utilizing the convective heat transfer dry cooling tower does not use any evaporation so this is basically not used in um, not used so much okay now moving towards the next one that is your fluid cooler type cooling tower so this tower passes the working fluid through the tube bundle upon which the cleaning water is being sprayed so the spray or spray nozzle is there with the help of that the fluid cool cooler type cooling tower works so classification based upon the air draft one first one it is your atmospheric cooling tower so this type of tower basically atmospheric they are erected at the site and it is being usually found where it, it is being usually found on applications like uh, oil and gas industries refineries uh, manufacturing plants okay so an atmospheric tower consists of a big rectangular chamber and with two opposite louvers these these are the louvers two opposite louvers are there the tower is packed with a suitable tower fill it is being packed with a suitable tower fill and atmospheric air enters the tower through the louvers driven by its own velocity so air will enters from this side okay from from this uh, this side air will enters uh, an atmospheric tower it, it is being cheap and it is being inefficient as compared to the other towers okay so its performance largely depends upon the direction of the wind so that is the demerit of this atmospheric tower it depends upon the wind and the water it is being accumulated the water drizzles from here 
these points are the drizzling points and it, it it comes in contact with the air and with that the water is being cooled and that cool water it is being taken to the to your particular application so this is uh, classification based on air draft first one second one that we have that is your natural draft type in natural draft type basically we can have two things one is the cross flow and counter flow natural draft type cooling tower the natural draft or it can also be uh, treated as a hyperbolic because these cooling towers they are hy hyperbolic in shape so uh, cooling towers make the use of a difference in temperature between the ambient air and the hotter air inside and the hotter air inside the tower as hot air moves upward we know that the hot air be be becomes uh, lighter and it moves in an upward direction so it moves in an upward direction through the tower as hot air rises up and fresh air fresh air fresh cool air is drawn into the tower through an air inlet at the bottom so with with that the water is being cooled and that cooled water it is being supplied to the your particular application now mechanical draft type uh, that is the third classification third part so in that there are two things are there one is forced draft type and induced draft type basically these two types of cooling towers are used in the hvac applications and it can be cross uh, flow or counter flow both so forced type is what basically we are using a fan here and with the help of that fan the air it is being forced to this there is a heat exchanger there and air comes out from here and the water it is being coming in it is being drops from the drizzles from the top and this water and this air comes in contact there is a heat transfer between that and the water is water is being cooled and the hot air it is being rejected and the cooled water it is being accumulated at the base and that cool water it is being used for the for your application for cooling the system so this is your forced draft type and why it is being called a forced draft draft type because we are using a fan here that is a fan this is a fan fan is fan is there okay now the second one that we have that is your induced draft type cooling tower so in induced draft type cooling tower basically what happens uh, there is a suction the fan it is being placed here in induced draft type the fan it is being placed here and it uh, throws the air so in order to throw the air it will suck air from inside so air suction will be from this side ye air suction is taraf se hoga and once the air suction will be done so it comes in contact with the water hot water it is coming it is being drizzles from the top so during the um, during the contact uh, the air takes the heat of the water water's temperature comes down it is being accumulated at the bottom and this hot air it is being released into the atmosphere so this is basically your induced draft type cooling tower okay now let's move ahead and see that is classification based upon the air flow pattern as we have discussed there are two types of pattern one it is your counter uh, it is a counter flow in counter flow induced draft type cooling towers what happen air travels vertically let's see the drawing so air travels vertically across the field air this is your air air travels vertically across the field okay so air it is coming like this and it is traveling like this you see the cursor air travels vertically across the field sheet opposite to the downward motion of water water is coming like this water is coming like this water is coming like this and it is going opposite air enters an open area beneath the field media so air enters from here beneath the field media uh, and then drawn up vertically the water is being sprayed through the pressurized nozzles so that water hot water it is being sprayed with the help of a pressurized nozzle and uh, flows downward through the field opposite to the air flow and it is being it is being opposite in the direction so that is why it is counter flow means that the air and water they are flowing in opposite direction that is your counter flow counter flow is basically what if something is flowing like this and the another thing is flowing like this so this is basically a counter the one is coming against the another so that is the counter now the second one that we have here that is your cross flow so in case of cross flow induced uh, draft cooling tower the air enters 
one or more vertical faces so air enters in a one or more vertical faces so air is coming from here and it is coming out from here so sorry water water distribution basin is there hot water is coming from here and air is coming from here so this basically is what exactly happens here so the movement is like this this is your air and this is your water so this is basically your cross they 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 are cutting each other they are cutting each other they are not against each other they are cutting each other so that's why this one it is your cross flow and this one it is your counter flow i believe it is clear to each and everyone we will be sharing you a detailed study material for for the the cooling tower so don't worry for that okay i'm just going through your queries since lots of queries are there so i'm just trying to uh, revert within the session only okay so this is your you know, forced and uh, means cross flow and counter flow uh, cooling tower induced cooling draft type cooling tower now let's move ahead and see that important factors that governs the operate operation of any cooling tower so what it can be it can be definitely it will be the dry well temperature it will be the wet well temperature of the dry well and wet well temperature of the atmosphere it will be the temperature of the water so let's see that is the dry well temperature it will be the dry well temperature and wet well temperature of air so definitely it depends upon what it depends upon the season so selection of cooling tower depends upon season because from season to season your outside dbt and wbt changes okay now the temperature of warm water definitely the water which is coming uh, which is coming from the condenser of any chiller so what would be the temperature the standard temperature that is your condenser water inlet temperature standard condenser water inlet temperature is what it is 35 degree fahrenheit and this is as per hri 550 590 standard air conditioning heating refrigeration institute 550 slash 590 standard this is 550 don't understood it as 550 it is 550 slash 590 standard okay now the efficiency of contact between air and water in terms of volumetric mass that is the transfer coefficient and the contact time between air and water so uh, up to what time there is a contact between air and water is there and uh, uh, that is the that is one thing here and the heat transfer volumetric mass transfer coefficient okay uniformity of distribution of phases within the tower so how how the water it is being how the water it is being um, distributed so there will be a, a, evenly and uniform distribution of water which is being coming from the top of the cooling tower air pressure drop is there and desired temperature of the cool water so that is one of the important thing that what is the desired temperature important thing this one it is the important part that what is the desired temperature of the cool water okay so these are the important uh, things which governs the operation of any cooling tower now let's move ahead and see now in in play, in case of any cooling tower design this is basically from the manufacturer point of view that how they can uh, design the cooling tower the first thing that the cooling tower manufacturers carry out the research the modeling and computer simulations just to predict the tower's performance that how how we can determine the uh, performance of any cooling tower the cooling tower design it is being governed by a relation which is given by a markel equation and you can just go through this equation yeah you can just refer the thermodynamics and there you can see that this is the equation that is the markel equation and the tower characteristic value it it can be kav by l equal to integration from t1 to t2 dt by hw minus ha where k it is the mass transfer coefficient and its unit it, it is in btu of water 
sorry it will be in pound of water per h square feet per uh, per hour square feet a it will be your contact area and it will be per uh, per tower volume so contact area it will be in square feet and tower volume it will be in cubic feet v it will be your v it will be your active cooling volume and uh, divided by that is uh, feet cube by feet square of plan area so active volume by plan area that is your uh, cross sectional area basically that we can say that l it is it is the uh, water rate and it will be in pound per hour square feet hw is the enthalpy of air water vapor mixture at bulk water temperature and ha is the enthalpy of air water vapor mixture at wet well temperature so this equation basically used to just uh, determine the tower characteristic characteristics and what will be the performance of the tower okay now let's move ahead and quickly just see this important terminologies are there first one it is the range that how we can define the range so range it is your hot water temperature minus cold water temperature and uh, now we'll just write few things that what exactly the hot water temperature is here here hot water temperature we start from cold water temperature cold water temperature this is basically your condenser water inlet temperature condenser water inlet temperature and this is 35 degree fahrenheit hot water temperature this is condenser water outlet so this this is this is your chiller inlet this is your chiller outlet so outlet it is your 94.3 degree fahrenheit these two temperatures are as per as per same that is your hri 550 slash 590 standard according to that standard these two temperatures so hot water both the values we will take uh, values temperature it will be measured in degree fahrenheit now capacity of cooling tower this is basically 1.25 that is 25% additional load will be there why this 25% additional load is there there 25% additional load is considered due to losses in cooling tower due to losses in cooling tower okay now heat rejection how we can determine that how much heat is being rejected by the cooling tower the formula to calculate that it is your flow rate in gpm and that is being multiplied by the range and it is being multiplied by a value of 500 which is being constant value okay and efficiency of cooling tower it will be basically basically what it is uh, range upon range plus approach by uh, multiplied by 100% basically cool. efficiency of cooling tower that is efficiency of cooling tower this is basically hot water temperature hot water temperature minus cold water temperature cold water temperature divided by hot water temperature minus wet well temperature minus wet well temperature wet well temperature multiplied by 100% so basically isse hum kis tarike se likh sakte hain this hot water minus wet well hot water minus cold water it can be treated as range but how we can write hot water we can write this as hot water we i will just write in a short form or let me write in a hot water temperature 
माइनस कोल्ड वाटर टेम्परेचर प्लस कोल्ड वाटर टेम्परेचर माइनस वेडबल टेम्परेचर सो बेसिकली दिस दिस एंड दिस दिस कोल्ड वाटर एंड कोल्ड वाटर इट विल बी कैंसल आउट एंड इट विल बी हॉट वाटर माइनस वेडबल टेम्परेचर एंड दिस इज रेंज एंड दिस इज अप्रोच सो दैट्स वाई इट कैन बी डिराइव इन टू रेंज बाय रेंज बाय रेंज प्लस अप्रोच multiplied by 100% and this is this is your efficiency of cooling tower and this is what it is being written here okay range by range plus approach multiplied by 100 percentage okay so uh, there is one query which is being asked from your friend that uh, how we can know that it is 500 Uh, multiplication factor is there so i will explain basically in case of cooling tower your heat rejection it, it is in one tier it is 15000 bdu per hour okay so since this uh, we, we are just about to end here so i will explain this dot that how this 500 will come and then we will move ahead okay i will explain that don't worry for that so we will we will start from here and there is one query that how how this 500 is there so we will explain this 500 and then we will move ahead okay so you just join from the next link which is being given in the group and then we will continue from there okay we will be just discussing one case study from there each and everything will be clear don't worry for that thank you